today um, I'm going to talk about true discipleship because in our generation today we do a few things right but perhaps we need to talk about the other things. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart Before I lift my cares, I will lift my arms I want to know you, I want to so, find So, Christianity 101 You believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Lord You believe that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and so with your mouth you have confessed Jesus and you believe in your heart and so you are saved glory to God you have received the Holy Spirit of promise that's step, step three by the way and then four you have been baptized to remember dying and being born and resurrecting with Christ so that's step four of, uh, of your Christian walk so first of all how do you do on those step one, two, three, and four? Um, one key thing you have to see there is I've talked about uh, uh, baptism. This is not child baptism because a child cannot confess with their mouth and believe in their heart and thereafter remember what Christ has done for them. So think about that in case you haven't um, uh, gotten baptized. So Christianity 101. Um, unfortunately, in uh, today's generation, a lot of times we are not told the next step after that altar call where someone becomes a Christian, but it is quite important to go through these steps. Um, maybe just to give you a bit of how I learned this for myself about this true discipleship. So on 28th of uh, May 2017, I became a Christian and uh, I got baptized. So. One of the most important things I did is that I downloaded a Bible app called Bible.com and I set about to read the entire Bible for myself in one year. And uh, I wanted to read it, but I also wanted someone to guide me. But he gave me really good advice. This friend of mine who's a pastor, he told me, no, you leave other things for now. Just read the Bible. The Holy Spirit himself will teach you. It was probably some of the best advice that I have received. And uh, I followed that advice and I, I read the entire Bible for myself in one year. What I found were a lot of things. For example, I found Old Testament gems. Um, there were so many times when I imagined when I was growing up or younger that, for example, God is cruel, but I didn't have the full picture. When I read, for example, a book like Jeremiah, I was reading this with my wife. We cried. We were so sad because we we're seeing how merciful God was. People rebel and God forgives. That was quite interesting from the, from the Old Testament. So it's good to read because you get that. The second thing that reading gave me is it gave me a full context, a full perspective. And a lot of times when you read just bits and pieces, you take things out of context. It also helps in discernment because um, a lot of times Christians are asked to be discerning. When you hear people, you might have false teachers and false prophets. Reading the entire Bible for yourself enables you to have that. The third thing that uh, reading the Bible did was God revealed personal revelations to me through reading the Bible. And one of them is this series of videos that I'm doing. So he gave me 12 topics to start with. He gave me the call of my ministry. So for example, he told me my ministry in many ways was going to be like John the Baptist. So that was something that I found from revelation from God's word. The fourth thing that God did was he changed my mindset and he's still changing my mindset because in fact, I am not a finished product, but daily, I press on towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So when I first became a Christian, I used to go to church and I didn't want to sing and praise and worship. But as God slowly took me through the Bible, I read things like the Psalms, I was able to see that you lift up your voice and you praise God. The second thing God taught me about was how to give. I didn't want to give to the, to the church. This is tithes and offerings. He then changed my mind and, and taught me. So that's what I have learned and that is what brings me to true discipleship. So how do you start with true discipleship? What is the first step? Um, 
like I've highlighted, the first step is, I believe, to read the Bible for yourself. And uh, Jesus explains it by using the analogy of a vine. He expects you to be plugged into him. And uh, the principle being that a disciple, you have a, a teacher, Jesus, and you as a disciple, a student. The first thing is you want to know who your teacher is. So reading the word of God is a start. But he expects you to, in fact, be plugged into him. And uh, and he uses uh, this analogy of a, of, a, of a vine where he says... I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So that's the first thing as a disciple, remain in Jesus. The second thing as a disciple is to take up your cross. Now, a lot of times in our generation, we believe in the privileges of being children of God. You know, God is our provider, Jehovah Jireh. God is our protector. We are children of a king. We are heirs of his promises. But with privileges come responsibilities. And one of those responsibilities is, Jesus says, take up your cross every day. Now, the cross is not something pleasant, but he's expecting you to be fully committed. And in fact, this is what Jesus said about taking up your cross If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So you can see it is critical. Jesus is saying you have to deny yourself because being a disciple comes at a cost to yourself. But... He is actually quite a good master. And I use the word master and I use the word servant of Christ. And there are people who might be offended by it. But let's look at it as maybe he's your teacher. If you're offended by me using the word master and and servant, I hope he doesn't offend you. Um, he, he's actually a great master. And this is a, the, he actually helps you to carry your Lord. And uh, this is what he actually says about himself. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus is clearly saying that, yes, take up your cross and follow me daily. But he's also saying, in fact, it is his cross. The yoke is light and easy because by comparison, he who is in the world, the devil, he's a cruel master. We've done Christianity one or two. You've taken up your cross. Now you're walking. Now you're running. What does Jesus say about that next step? He actually says it is a marathon. It is not a race. And uh, a lot of people think that as soon as you become a Christian, that's it. But actually, the Apostle Paul is indicating that it is actually more serious than that. It's not the one who starts the race and becomes a Christian. It is, um, it is he who finishes who wins the prize. Because how many people do you know they start? Others fall on the way. This is in a race. Others fall on the way. <clears throat> Others get distracted. It is he who runs to the end, who wins. And the Apostle Paul says it this way. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, their very best to win, but only one receives the prize. Run your race in such a way that you may seize the prize and make it yours. So don't make a false start. Don't get disqualified. Don't run along the track and fall. Finish the race. Another critical thing then, now that you have started the race, now you're on the marathon, do not make a lifestyle habit of certain sins. And this is very, very serious because a lot of people think that because they have the Holy Spirit of guarantee and a lot of times the Bible gives assurance about promises of salvation, you will be with me in paradise. People think that that is a license to sin. 
And Jesus speaking through the Apostle Paul again makes a very clear warning. And this is, our, this is what he says. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, no idolaters, no adulterers, no men who have sex with men, no thieves, no the greedy, no drunkards, no slanderers, no swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. Now, a lot of times you will know clearly that generally evil people will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Apostle Paul in this passage has said neither and he ends it by saying and that is what some of you were he's indicating that Christians should not be doing these things as a lifestyle yes you can sin but repent of it and walk on the journey if you make a sin if you make sin a lifestyle you know then you are at risk that you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven it is a race it's a marathon it's not a race and you must finish it the final thing that, uh, that disciples of Jesus do is they obey their master in everything. Have you met another disciple of someone? And this is what uh, Christians call the Great Commission. And uh, this is when Jesus was leaving the earth. He gave his disciples a command. And, he, and this is what he told them. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So you see, true discipleship or true Christianity is about making someone a disciple, not, start, not only making someone a Christian, you follow through to the end and someone becomes a disciple and obeys everything. How is your Christian walk? Do you think that Jesus would tell you, you good and faithful servant? Are you obeying everything? Think about that. So, your turn. What have you learned? How has this video blessed you? What will you now do differently? How will you ensure that you read the whole Bible as part of your lifestyle as a disciple of Christ? And what practices do you need to start or do you need to stop doing as a good and faithful servant of Christ? I hope this video blesses you. Write to me, email me, and share your own testimony. God bless you. Your voice